Hey, what's going on everyone? Uh, today we're talking about the uh, owner operator program with Warner Enterprises. So uh, let's get this going. So the first thing is like with their owner operator, owner operator, lease operator, I don't care what you want to call it in the end, you know, you're paying for the fuel, you're paying for the taxes, you know, you're paying for the insurance, you're paying for the repairs, you know, you're, you're an owner operator, I, I don't care what they, what you want to call it, you can call it whatever you want, you know, it, it's your truck, you're paying for it, it's yours, you know, you know, it may be, you know, they can say lease operator, but, you know, I don't care, it, you're, you're an owner operator, that's the way I look at it, you know, the, the, the program I was in, I didn't go through Warner for say there was a company there, there was a couple companies with inside Warner there was a uh, <laughs> oh man I can't remember offhand there's like three of them but I went with the Pegasus and Pegasus you know they, they don't do no credit check and you know they don't run none of that crap you know like I, I end up the first truck I got with them <clears throat> was a uh, 2012 Freightliner and it had like about 475,000 miles on it. A little bit of a warranty left, you know, but not very much. And, uh, you know, I, I paid for the fuel, insurance, taxes, repairs, you know, maintenance program, you know. But there's just there's some advantages and disadvantages of it. You know, I never went through Warner's lease program, you know. But this is just as, you know, if you're interested in the Pegasus and you've seen the trucks, it's got the little horse on the side, Pegasus. So, um, some of the disadvantages, you know, like with Pegasus, you know, like with Warner, they have like the newer equipment, like you know, the new, new equipment. <laughs> and Pegasus, they would get like the hand-me-down <laughs> equipment, you know. Like I got the 2012 Cascadia, and the only reason she had, at the time, she had, you know, 15s, 14s, 15s, and 16s, 16s, and I took the 12 only because it was like a three-year lease. I wanted to pay it off quicker. I didn't want to get stuck with no five-year lease and stuff like that. So I went with the uh, three-year lease, and in the beginning, you know, I was paying more, paying a little bit extra, and, uh, I got to like two and a half years. And <laughs> I got to about about six months left on the lease, and the repair bills just killed me. And, you know, I had to let it go. But um, that's what I'm saying. Like you know, like if you go through like the lease program Warner, you're gonna get newer equipment. And Pegasus, not so much. It, I wish I could remember the other other companies, but. Uh, it's the same thing with the other companies. Warner gets the new stuff, and they give these guys the hand-me-downs. <clears throat> you know, they do pay for your scales. And that's, I'm sorry. They pay for your tolls, pre-pass, and your scales. They, uh, you know, you got the CatScale app, and it's linked to your, your fuel card. And you know they just pay for it right off the bat, so that that was a good thing there. You know, one thing, a couple of things I didn't, you know, like you can refuse the loads as the owner operator, but it's still like forced dispatch, you know. So it's weird, you know. It's you know I used to always kind of say I gripe about them, but I was, you know, I, you know, you would think as an owner operator, you know at least give me some options on, on loads. You know, if you're not going to give me a load board for say, at least give me like, you know, hey, we got three loads, you know, which one do you want? You know, I'll take A, you know, <laughs> you know, they wouldn't even give you that. You know, they just, you know, here it is. You want it? No. Okay. Well, it, it, you know, sometimes they'll come right back. Okay. Well here, how about this one? Nah. Then, you know, other times you can, you could be waiting, you know, they, they say there's no, uh, what's the word for it? a retaliation, 
<laughs> could not say there is, but there was times when I turned down a load. And hey, we'll see you tomorrow morning. And I sat all day, so. You know, you know as an owner operator, they never once griped to me about my home time. You know, like, you know, sometimes they didn't get me home on time, but sometimes they got me home early. So it's kind of like, you know, sometimes they'll wash out. But, but you kind of remember the times that you didn't get home on time on the times that you got home early. But the only thing that turns around is if you come home too much, you're not gonna you're not gonna make the money because you know, you're running by the mile. So you know you're not making the money sitting at the house, and and that's what got to be a little bit old was just you know you would have like four weeks out of the month, you know you could have two good weeks, and another good another week would be like eh because you just came out of the house or you're going home, so you're gonna lose time. You know. You know, they, they would help you with your repairs for the most part. You know, sometimes, like, you know, I did have a my escrow set up, but, you know, like, at the end, my repairs are getting too much. And, like, you know, it happened a couple times. And, like, you know, I, like, depleted my escrow. You know, like, for, for instance, this was one happened. I had to have my uh, my DPF filters replaced. And that killed my, my escrow. And... <laughs> I got my truck out of the shop. Ch Chandler, Candler, North Carolina. I went to the TA, got fuel, big puddle of coolant under my truck, my reservoir tank busted. <laughs> then that was like another almost two thousand dollars. I didn't have any money in my escrow account, so you know, what's that mean? You're going two or three weeks without getting a paycheck. That's what's gonna happen. Sometimes they would slide stuff to the side, let you build your escrow back up, and sometimes they would just, you ain't getting paid, that's just the way it is, you know? <clears throat> yeah, they, they had okay fuel discounts. I thought they could be better, because like when you talk to other people in other companies, like it would, it would every week it would change. You know, it would be, fluctuate from like, like the low, you know, low 20s, a couple times I seen it like 18, 19 cents per mile. That's what, like, if say if you ran 3,000 miles, you would get back like you know 20 cents a mile for your fuel discount. But then you know during the winter, I seen it go up as like you know 38 cents. So if you know how to run your fuel, you could almost make a little bit of money off that. You know. <clears throat> In the beginning, I remember when I was the lease operator, you know, they gave you the fuel card, and, and they said, as an owner operator, you can fuel anywhere you want. You know, it was anywhere. You, if you want to go to mom and pop, you go to mom and pop. And you would look for who had the lowest amount of fuel, you know, lowest priced fuel. But near the end, they changed their program. Then you had to start going to their places inside their fuel network. So then it looks like, you know, I'm back to a, you know, company driver almost. Again, like, you know, you're told to where to go, to where, where to go. Cause like, you know, it, it was just, <laughs> it, they started taking away some of the stuff and it just, it got more discouraging at the, near the end. You know, you, you, there was weeks where I had to, you know, you had to gross like 35 to 4,500 just to bring home, you know, maybe thirteen or fourteen hundred dollars, you know, you know, it, it, it just it was the cost or just, you know, the fuel. You, you gotta look, know how to run your fuel, you know, save on the fuel. But like my truck, it didn't have no APU, you know, no inverter, no nothing. So it's like if it was hot, you're idling. If it's cold, you're idling. So yeah, you know, it didn't have you know the idle, opti idle and all that crap like some of the company trucks do. I think it will just idle until you turn it off. So, you know, I don't know. I'm gonna stay comfortable, and that's just I paid the price for that. And, and the one big disadvantage I, I I used to get upset about is that they would they pound pound you down your throat, man. They they would want you to be their trainer, you know, as an owner operator. And I just didn't want to have you know, if I'm bringing a new guy into my truck and I had a 10 speed, and he burns out my clutch, who's paying for that? Yeah, you know, not them. You know, they're they're gonna fit the bill, but that just means I'm not getting paid because I don't have the money in my escrow. 
I just couldn't see for that, you know. Yeah. Basically, my overall, as an owner-operator, man, <laughs> sometimes the good overweighs the bad, but this was my experience. This time the bad overweighed the good. <laughs> you, know, was, you know, the pay, you know, their pay is like on a sliding scale, so like, the less miles you drive, the more you're gonna get paid per mile. But you know, if you drive anything over, I think it was like 900, like over a thousand, it was like a dollar to a mile or something like that. So you try to keep your trips within like four to 500 miles and you're gonna get like dollar 25 around there somewhere. And if you could have multiple, multiple, multiple <laughs> trips like that, you, you could do all right. And I did all right. I had weeks so I did good. And I did weeks where, you know, I drove 3,000 miles plus and, you know, barely brought home $1,000, you know. That's if you ran the whole time. You had no breakdown. You had <laughs> nothing. There was just too much against it, you know. My experience with them was that it was hard to be successful as an owner-operator when you're not in control of your business. You can't pick your loads. You know, you know you, your, your truck wasn't in that good condition from the beginning. I should have probably not even got the truck, but it could have been another truck, you know. You know, it was beat down. By the time I got rid of it, it had 730,000 miles. You know, you, you couldn't go fuel where you wanted, so you had to go to their network. And they're still forced dispatching you, so you're not pick and choose where you're going, unless you got a good. Actually, I could say before I left, I had a good fleet manager, and he was he was going me, he was moving me pretty good. But then, you know, if there's one good, there's probably four or five bad. But if anyone. If you, if you get anything from this video <laughs> about being an owner operator or lease operator with Warner, I would say if you don't have good credit, you don't have much money, go to Pegasus. If your credit's fairly good and you have some money to put down, go through the Warner and you want to stay with Warner, you stay with go to the Warner lease program their new their new lease program was a pretty good deal you know, they help you help you be more successful you know help you keep rolling you know you know they don't like saying like you know they offer you less downtime you know you can get you know loaner trucks um, you know just there's a couple of their options to keep you rolling with with where at Pegasus you broke down you broke down and that's just it Hope you got money for a hotel, you know. But, uh, yeah. So these are just my experiences as an owner operator with Warner. Uh, hope you can take something from this video. Hope it helped you out. And uh, if you know anybody that's interested in Warner operator, owner operator with Warner, you know, let them know about this so they can check the video out. And uh, if you have any comments or anything or questions, just throw them in the comments and. Uh, I'll get back to you. So, appreciate you guys watching, and uh, check you out next time.